Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And we welcome you back to Talk of the Town for this Tuesday, August 10th. I'm Gary Stevens. It is the second Tuesday of the month, and it's our time at this time to get an update on what's going on at the Holland Museum. Michelle Stempion, the Education and Community Programs Manager, and Lauren Harvey, the Education and Volunteer Coordinator, once again, join us in the Zoom conversation to uh, talk about what's going on at the museum. Ladies, good morning and welcome back to WHTC to both of you. Good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. Glad both of you are both of you are with us. Michelle was the first you heard. Lauren was the second that you heard. Let's begin our discussion not with things going on immediately, but something that begins a week from Friday. There is a brand new exhibit coming to the uh, Holly Museum, and either Lauren or Michelle talk about United for Progress, the La Oop story. Yes, we are very excited to have this new exhibition, which, as you said, opens next Friday, August 20th, and it is uh, United for Progress, the Laup story. If you're not familiar with Laup, uh, which is an acronym for Latin Americans United for Progress, which is an organization here in Holland that has actually been around since 1964. And uh, this organization has been an incredibly uh, strong force in the Holland community for uh, a range of things, um, really impacting the Latinx community. Um, that includes education, cultural activities, uh, community involvement, um, dealing with issues of discrimination. Um, so really they have been, their goal is um, working to create an equitable Holland for everyone. Um, so we felt it was very important to tell the story of this um, organization that has been such a, a strong part of Holland for so long. So the, um, the exhibition Exhibition will really talk about the organization's history um, and how they um, have evolved, how they're continuing to evolve as an organization here in Holland, and how they continue to serve um, the Latinx community as well as Holland in general. But um, we're really going to be focusing on the story of the organization and their connection with the Latinx community. Um, the exhibit labels will be bilingual. And um, we will have some, in addition to artifacts and photographs from significant events and programs and things that they have done for over the years, um, they'll have a, an exhibit interaction station um, where people can respond to the exhibit um, by writing down their thoughts and, and questions and how they have interacted with Laup and how it's impacted their lives. There'll be an area to do that in the exhibit. Um, so we are really looking forward to, to having this show. It will be uh, here until uh, January 17th. And uh, we are just so grateful um, for how we've been able to collaborate with Laup um, to, to bring this exhibition to the public. One of the sponsors, Michelle, is uh, in memory of Becky Arenas. I had a chance to meet her a little bit and, and know her a little bit. Uh, she left an indelible mark on the community, especially the uh, Latin American community in the Holland area for all of her work. And I know that uh, Lou Reyes from uh, uh, Alegria Latina from our FM station, the Lakeshores 92.7 The Van, spoke very highly of Becky and the contributions she's made. Yes, we are just so thrilled that um, the exhibit is going to be able to honor uh, her and her contributions, as well as um, just just an incredible organization that has has played such a huge role in the development of Holland and how and and what Holland is today. So um, it's it, I really encourage everyone to come and see the exhibit. It you're going to learn maybe some history you don't know, and I think that's that's really important. If you got a question for Michelle Stempion or Lauren Harvey from the Holland Museum, they'll be happy to answer it at 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. In conjunction with the new exhibit, United for Progress, the La Oop story, is going to be a panel discussion coming up on August 26th. Either you, Michelle, or you, Lauren, can be able to explain what this discussion is all about. 
Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that. So we thought what a great way to kick off the beginning of this exhibition to bring together uh, some of the key players and, and continuing change makers at Lau um, to talk about the organization and again, what they are doing, what they've been doing, what's the history of the organization, but also where are they going? Um, what are their goals and vision now for the organization? So on the uh, 26th, which is a Thursday evening, and at this point, we are planning this will be an in-person program at the museum. Uh, it will be at seven o'clock, uh, although people can come about 630 to actually see the exhibition before we start the program at seven o'clock, but um, which we hope people will do, uh, that we will have a panel discussion um, to discuss Laup's history and its achievements and its current mission. Um, so we will have four guests with us that evening. Uh, Yada Ramirez, who is the Laup Programs Director, uh, Reverend Benito Aguilera, who is Laup's Interim Director, Martin Valise, um, who is Board Treasurer for um, Laup, and Alfredo Gonzalez, who is one of the the founding members of Lao. So we are thrilled to have all of them with us um, to talk and they will talk about the history and of course take questions from the audience. Um, and it'll be a really interesting evening. We hope to also record it, uh, but we do encourage people to come. Um, it is a, a free program, although we do encourage donations. And um, to come to the museum that evening, August 26th, um, come at 6.30, see the exhibit and then come to the program at seven. There is another program to a certain extent related to the La Oop United for Progress, the La Oop Story new exhibit. It's on the 21st, and it's going to involve space and the Spark Lab. Uh, again, Michelle, you or Lauren can talk about 321 Avolar or Let's Fly. Yes, I can jump in and talk a little bit about this. Uh, we're so excited to host this program because it is one of the first family programs that we will be able to host in Spark Lab since Spark Lab has opened it once again to the public. So this program is happening Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. through 1 p.m. And it is included with regular admission costs. It is a family program in connection with our Laut exhibit uh, focusing in on Dr. Ellen Ochoa, who was the first Latina in outer space. So families will get a chance to hear the story of Dr. Ellen Ochoa. They'll get a chance to explore the museum and the new La Uf exhibit and participate in some really fun space themed activities in Spark Lab. So we're so excited. We can't wait. Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, and, and real quick, Lauren, the reaction of having Spark Lab open, it's been a little bit more than a month since it has reopened. It's almost as if everybody has been welcoming them back with open arms. Yes, it's been so great to see families in this space again. Um, yesterday night was our August 2nd Monday evening, and we had tons of families in there all playing and interacting and exploring, inventing, all that good stuff. And everybody's been excited to, to return. Real quick question before we move on. Um, has Spark Lab also become part of a traveling thing? I know that before the outbreak, uh, there was uh, times when the uh, museum would have Spark Lab out uh, at various events, a, a, a sample of the Spark Lab. Is that back out yet or is that still on hold? Yes. Yeah, so um, a lot of the community events that we participate in, um, we bring Spark Lab or elements of Spark Lab out to the public to um, be able to interact with. So last month we attended the Makatawa Water Festival and we had our clean up the ocean activity for the kids to interact with there. And we have a lot of exciting outreach opportunities coming up in September and October, which I'm sure we'll have elements of Spark Lab out in the community as well. 616-395-1450 if you have a question for Michelle Stepien, the Education and Community Programs Manager, or for Lauren Harvey, the Education and Volunteer Coordinator with the Holland Museum. They'll be happy to answer it again, that number, 616-395-1450. Got a program coming up on Thursday night, last call to a certain extent, for creating affirming spaces for the LGBTQ plus community. Either one of you want to talk about that? 
Sure. Yes, it is kind of last call. It's only just a few days away, but there's still opportunities to register. But our program this Thursday, now this is a virtual program, so this will be on Zoom, um, uh, creating affirming spaces for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we are, this is a free program. We are very excited to have uh, Jenny Mills and Jay Knight uh, with us. Um, we've They have done programs with us before, and they are incredible and they will have an I think an incredible presentation and a great conversation with our attendees. We're really going to be talking about how important it is um, in all of our spaces, but especially public spaces and business spaces to create affirming spaces for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, this is really important, especially in business, um, because it really will help a, a business's bottom line by reducing isolation and mental health stressors and um, and uh, staff turnover. So um, it's really in all of our best interests to create open and welcoming and affirming spaces for everyone, but especially our members of our LGBTQ plus community. So they're going to be talking about um, how businesses and organizations can do that and, and how, how, we, how we bring about that kind of change. So uh, I encourage people to sign up. Um, you can sign up through the Holland Museum website and there is an, a link there to the event and a link to Eventbrite to register for the program. And then we will send out a Zoom link on Thursday um, for the program Thursday evening, which starts at seven o'clock. Now, speaking about last call, the last summer walking tour ends on Friday and it's an appropriate one. And I'll, the reason why I say it's appropriate is we last, last Friday, we had Holland Fire Marshal Brent Groendike on, on talk of the Tim. And we were discussing about the wildfires out in uh, California, one of which destroyed a, uh, a, a gold boom town in uh, uh, the Sierra um, uh, Nevada mountains. Uh, and I was talking to him about the possibility of a fire such as that striking Holland. And of course, he brought out the great fire back in the uh, late 19th century. And that's the focus of the firewalk one today, but also one coming up on Friday. Again, Michelle or Lauren, either one of you can talk about the final summer walking tour, the firewalk coming up on Friday. Yes, um, we are we are closing out our our firewalk summer season, unfortunately. Um, but we do have two more dates available. One tonight um, from six to seven thirty, and one on Friday from ten thirty to twelve. And the topic is the the firewalk. Um, so this happens to be the one hundred fiftieth anniversary of the Holland Fire. It happened in eighteen seventy one, and it it was a huge destructive fire that came through and burned a majority of the city. So this tour talks about the history of the fire, how it got started, how the residents tried to battle the fire, save their own property. It's a really interesting tour and opportunity to learn about the city. It's about, an, it's about a mile and a half and you'll be touring with one of our summer interns, Benjamin. He'll be giving the tour um, tonight and then Madeline will be giving the tour on Friday. So they're so excited. They're so enthusiastic and it's a great way to learn about the city's history. Yeah, I just didn't know whether or not the, the, the Tuesday one, which was today, I didn't know whether or not it was a, an afternoon one or an evening one. But as Lauren, you mentioned, it is an evening one tonight. And then it's a morning, late morning uh, stroll on Friday. Uh, I'll throw you a curveball question, either one of you, Michelle or Lauren. Um, will the tour take a look at just areas that were stricken or do we have any... <sighs> Any symbols, any relics that are still visible of that of, of structures or things that survived the fire? Yes, we do. Actually, um, the museum's settler's house, um, located just down the street from our Capon house, that was actually built before the fire, about four years before the fire, and it survived the fire. Um, so that is one of the sites in the city that you can come tour to see what life was like pre-fire. Um, the museum also has a number of different artifacts that are available to the public that survived the fire from local families that are on display in our main history galleries and available for the community to see. And of course, this fall, we are having our 
celebration or remembrance of the uh, 150th anniversary of the fire. So there'll be a lot more to come on that. Yeah, you, you, you anticipated, Lauren, my question about whether or not well, there was going to be something in early October to commemorate uh, uh, this. And, of course, it ties in with the uh, fire safety parade and uh, fire safety week nationwide. Of course, the Chicago fire got a lot more pub and did a lot more damage. But, uh, you know, Holland had had a bad day. It was just the weather conditions was absolutely, uh, they would say, a perfect storm for that particular situation. Holland, Chicago, the entire Midwest. And uh, there were more than just those two fires, but those are the ones that we focus a lot of our attention on. Now, there's another thing that's going to be in the winding down stages, Michelle and Lauren, and that is the summer tours, the family-friendly tours of the Capon and Settler's House. Either one of you can uh, pick up the ball on that particular topic. Sure. So we have um, two historic homes uh, down the street from the museum, the Capon House and the Settler's House. Um, as Lauren mentioned, the Settler's House was built in 1867 and survived the 1871 fire. Um, the Capon House was built by the Capon family in 1874 and are two excellent examples of how people lived in Holland uh, during the late 19th century. And uh, those houses are available for tours on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Um, we are open from 11 to 3. We do encourage appointments um, and you can sign up for a tour uh, with an online form through our website and tours begin on the hour. And uh, they are one hour long and you see both houses and it's $7 for adults and $3 for uh, children and actually $5 for seniors. So, um, you know, if you would like to, you can schedule by going through our website or you can also contact Lauren uh, directly at the Holland Museum through her email um, to schedule a time to tour. And we will be doing those tours this weekend and next weekend, um, so through the 21st of August. That's why I wanted to bring it up because uh, it is almost as, you know, like a few other things, last call time for some of these things going on in the summer. The Holland Museum, by the way, I'll give the hours, uh, Monday, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Yesterday, of course, was the free second Monday from 4 to 7 p.m., but the next one will be before the next time we have another Holland Museum update on WHTC's Talk of the Town. So I'll remind everybody about September 13th, for the next free second Monday at the museum. However, I always like to end our discussions about how people can become involved with the museum. It's one thing to attend events that, uh, uh, shall we say, pique the interest, a specific interest, but being a supporter, a, a member of the museum comes with many fine benefits. Again, Michelle or Lauren, either one of you can talk about how one can become a member and at what level one can become a member. Uh oh. Nope, I just had trouble unmuting there for a second. <laughs> That's um, okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, really, membership is such an important way to become involved with the museum and support what we do. Um, we try and, and have as many of our events free to the public, and membership is a way to help support that so that we can make our programs as accessible, accessible as possible. Um, so we do have different levels of membership. There's a basic membership, which is $35, and you would get free admission for yourself and one guest. Uh, a family membership, which is $50, which includes two adults and children under 17. And then a premium membership, which is $125, um, would include admission for four adults and children under 17, but it also includes a membership in the North American Reciprocal Membership Program, which means you can get into other museums across the country that participate in that program for free if you are a member of that. And then also a subscription to Michigan History Magazine. Um, so that's an incredible perk for the $125 level 
level. Um, but again, membership is just, you, you get our newsletter, you know what's going on at the museum, um, you uh, get to come to our member openings um, that are just for members um, to see an exhibition before it opens to the public. Um, of course, obviously free admission to all, every, every time you come to the museum and for all programs. And again, it's just an incredible way to uh, support us and what we're doing and connect with us and support this, this organization that's so important to Holland. One final thing. I do have a caller. Hopefully, you don't, don't, we don't have a caller. Um, we'll have open line a little bit later on. But uh, indeed, the Holland Museum, it is a jewel, of course. For those who don't know where the Holland Museum is, I don't want to say shame on you because we have new people in town and, and they, they, they sometimes they, you know, we just got to tell them it is 10th and river, the old post office. Yes. I know that they're rebuilding 10th street right in front of the, uh, right in front of the museum, but uh, let's put it this way. You can still get in. So don't make that an excuse. Well, I can't get to the museum. It's all torn up. Yeah, you might have to walk a little bit. And for those who are, you know, need assistance, yeah, we'll try to make it you know, as accessible as possible for those who do need an, an extra hand or two to uh, get to the museum. But once you're there, it is certainly worth the trip. Uh, and also, there are going to be some people, and I'll bring this up to both of you, some people saying, you know, I saw something in the museum a couple of years ago. And then I came back to this week, and all of a sudden, what I saw a couple of years ago isn't there anymore. Not everything the museum has is displayed at the museum. You guys don't have the space. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's no worry. There's some fine storage areas underneath that keeps things safe and you know uh, clean and, and and preserved because we don't want to lose the history of Holland. It has a rich and storied history as well. Michelle Stempy and Lauren Harvey, I want to thank both of you very much for joining us today on WHTC's Talk of the Town. Tell us about some of the things going on at the Holland Museum. Wish both of you and everybody at the museum well, and look forward to chatting with both of you again sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lauren Harvey and Michelle Stempian from the Holland Museum.